Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. Let's start with this video. Do you want to load the complete website right inside your Compose Multi Platform app? Okay, so let's do that. We will be using the web view that will work across all platforms. So let's continue with this video. How we can do that? So there are many cases basically. When do you need to use the web view? So suppose let's say you are building a hybrid app, displaying the documents, right? Embedding a dashboard, web dashboard in your app, right? So in those cases, you will definitely use the web view. So we will discuss here the web view, how we can use that in the Compose Multi-Platform app, okay? So let's continue with that. So first of all, I will show you the library which we are using. So Compose Web View Multi-Platform. So this is the multi-platform version of the, you can say, Compose Web View library so that was the like part of the accomplished so that was for the compose web view that was for the compose basically right for the jetpack compose initially now this port is added and this is the separate library which is created there this will be supporting all platforms there okay so how we can use this so basically it will be using the native web view in android wk web view in ios and Kotlin CF browser for the desktop. Okay. For web, basically, we don't need the web view, right? That itself is a basically a web browser, so we don't need the web view. Okay. So let's continue with this. So, first of all, we need to add the Compose Web View multi platform, this library. So we need to expose it as API because this is needed by the desktop app, app as well okay to initialize this few things we need to initialize in desk, desktop that's why we need to expose it as api so that desktop can also access this part okay and also for the desktop thing we need to add this repo as well in the settings you can say dependency resolution management repositories we need to add this okay so Let's continue. So that was all about the setup. And now let's say how we can use what are the things which we need to use. Okay. So first of all, we need to create a web view state. Okay. So Remember web view state. So here if you see web view state have multiple things like which we can remember. We can remember it for URL as, as well, for web uh, HTML data as well. Okay. So here we will be using it for the URL. Let's say URL is github.com okay add that url here now we can initialize few things in this settings okay that state dot web settings we can use the apply block here to apply the multiple settings okay first one is maybe if it's not needed but if it's needed we can apply so log severity okay so we can apply like info or debug what kind of logging we want let's say debug okay and custom agent user agent string this is also not needed basically okay default is null but we can specify user agent if you want to force like which user agent to use let's say Mozilla 5.0 cool now so this was about this state okay and simply we can use this state with the view web view and it will work but few more things which we want to do here is first of all let's make the UI better basically 
we will load it here and for column we can add one app bar okay we can specify its title cmp web view example so by using this basically we can load complete website even i will show you even let's say we have flipkart we can load that as well okay and it will work wonderfully yeah a few things will not be working as expected because due to ui issues but most of the things will be working there okay so it is a composable and navigation icon we can specify so navigation icon we can specify so basically here i will like this will be conditional if user have navigated from the web view to the some other url and it can go back then only we will be showing that icon for that we will be using the navigator that i will show you later so first of all let's say i will show you web view basically just the minimal thing then we will improve that if you see it's loading the web view but initially while it was loading there was no loader or anything there we can show that it's loading completely fine right if you see so let's say loading state from state we can get the loading state okay and if is if you see we have multiple states here loading finished initializing we can use them accordingly if we want to do anything on these, these callbacks so here we need the loading while it's loading we can show the linear progress indicator okay so here we can specify progress as well picking up from the loading state dot progress and we want it to be fill full width okay let's see how it looks like now yeah loader is there but little bit issue was there okay mm, let's see um, specify some size here as well yeah it's working now maybe due to size issue it was happening okay so it's working cool now and now let's say we are on this page then we can show here back button so that that will work for navigating back it's basically working with the navigation gesture as well because navigator is automatically set there but if you see here it's navigator is automatically set but if we want to use that control it our way we can use remember web view navigator here okay and let's say let's use it above this Suppose here we want to show one back button okay so here we can check navigator dot can go back it provides many methods here according to like user can go forward can go back that is the web browser history thing okay so only then we can show the icon button okay on click dot navigate back okay 
and let's show one icon dot auto mirrored let's import it to mirror dot default dot arrow back what it's saying okay on click okay yeah, this like it was missing something this is on click okay okay for icon now it's showing it requires content description i guess let's so as of now set it as null now if we see oh we didn't pass this navigator here because it will be using the default one that's why we need to pass that navigator here our custom one okay so now let's try to run it and yeah it's showing now successfully and even if you see it's working completely with the back device back as well okay so if you see this site is loading completely fine okay now let's try to run it on the ios app if we see it's loading loading yeah and done it's loading here as well successfully okay and if we go here it's showing back button as well okay working cool okay and now we need to run it on the desktop so for desktop basically we need few additional setup if i show you desktop Redmi desktop so if you go here and find out we need to add this additional code in the main okay so let's add this so this is basically needed by the uh, browser we are using for the JVM part for that we need this initialization according to its structure okay the download part is not needed that was for before the like 1.7 version there are so many imports okay and now for remember set and get this is not needed let's remove this okay let's import max portlin math max okay let's add uh, label check let's import here we need to show our content that is displaying the web view okay that content which is displaying the web view we need to use that one from here we can remove and add it here so basically it's like some checks on the restart thing I didn't study it in the depth, but this is related to the KCF so part. Okay, we need to install directory. Then the progress thing we can track here. On downloading, we can like add that progress and catch up here. If we want to show like how much it's downloaded that website. Okay, on initialize, we are tracking initialize is true. So for settings, cache path, we are specifying here cache directory. Okay, so those things are mentioned here. Okay, so so in some cases maybe restart required this app optional listener to be notified when the application needs a restart may happen on some platforms if cf could not be initialized after downloading and installing yeah that is the reason we need to apply this check okay so let's um, actually one more check was there i guess yeah this one after evaluate so here we can specify this 
and let's sync it and then we will be running it again okay let's try to run it so if you see this is the thing it's tracking the downloading how much is downloaded if you see here downloading max of what is it's getting from there and the zero and that we are showing here so we can adjust it according to our logic we can show loader as well here according to this okay that loader which, which we showed there same thing or maybe some circular loader that depends on our choice basically now it's coming here and now it's loaded okay working fine if you go to the next screen yeah it's working fine okay cool so it's working on all three platforms so let's say now just do one cool thing here so this is let's say i will show you it will be able to load the flip cart let's do it on the ios maybe if you see looking cool the flip card is completely loaded in our ios app and if you go to other uh, screens its back navigation is also there okay cool okay so even it cool we can completely like some of the websites like they can completely load it inside our apps we don't even need to create the native apps but yeah they have their own disadvantages basically we will be discussing these things in a, one separate video basically so like loading the website using the web view or building the native uh, apps okay so if you see that was working fine on all platforms okay so that's all about this video one more thing basically i forgot so these two directories we need to add inside the git ignore okay it creates these two cache or bundle directories we can add them to the git ignore and that's fine and now it will be looking fine okay that's all about this video i hope you have enjoyed it and if you have enjoyed it please please like share and comment on it don't forget to subscribe youtube channel and that's all about this video i will see you in another video with another cool content till then bye bye take care have a great time keep coding